We talk a lot about executive presence on this channel because quite honestly, executive presence is one of the most important skills that you can master in order to become a highly effective executive. If you want to lead teams of people, you need to present yourself in a way that they feel comfortable and confident in you. And executive presence is kind of a soft topic. It's hard to describe and define quite honestly. And in fact, you can go, I think this is the fourth video that I've put on this channel about executive presence. My very first video that I've put on this channel way back in April of 2023 was what is executive presence? And I spent 22 minutes fumbling through a response. Luckily, there are other people who work in this space that are super intelligent around executive presence. One of my favorite authors is Sylvia Ann Hewlett, and she wrote a article for Harvard Business Review in the January, February, 2024 edition talking about executive presence. She published a book called Executive Presence in 2012, which is a seminal writing on what makes executive presence, what makes up like very intangible, soft things that is so important in understanding what it takes to be a leader and be seen as a leader. And she did an amazing job with this book in 2012. What she did recently was she's written an updated version of the book. 10 years later, what is executive presence now in 2024 and going forward? So this article on Harvard Business Review, I wanted to review it. I wanted to kind of talk through it and just kind of show you a little bit about this article. All the credit goes to Harvard Business Review. You can go to their website to see this article. And then I strongly encourage you to download Sylvia Ed Hewlett's book, Executive Presence. It's phenomenal. It's super powerful and it's required reading in my program. So with that, let's dive into this article. So Sylvia Ann Hewlett starts talking about the new rules of executive presence. And what she's talking about is that since 2012, a lot of things have changed in our society to change what makes executives look and seem like executives, what gives them that presence. And so there's, generally speaking, executive presence is perceived as consisting of three elements, gravitas, skillful communication, and the right appearance. And I will explain those a little bit as we go into this. What I want you to take away is the changes from 2012 to 2023 and beyond, and what is different about what makes executives have executive presence back then versus now. I mean, we've gone through the Me Too movement, COVID, a whole bunch of things have happened since 2012 that have changed the landscape for executives. And it's really curious to, to see how people, as they're polled, explain what it is about someone that gives them that executive presence. So she did this by surveying business executives. Back in 2012, she targeted 268 business executives at the director level or above. And in 2022, she surveyed 73 more, and they were basically asked to rank the importance of 25 leadership traits. So this is fascinating. Let's get into this. So first and foremost, business leaders today, like their counterparts a decade ago, view executive presence as a combination of gravitas, communication skill, and appearance. However, what makes up that is different from year to year. And so I'm gonna show you that. So let's start with gravitas traits. Right at the top, just like you would expect, confidence is the primary driver of gravitas. Gravitas is your weight in a space. If you think of like an A-list actor, you know, at a local restaurant, if, if you go to the restaurant down the street and there's like Brad Pitt sitting there having a meal, he's going to carry a certain weight in the space and everyone's going to be buzzing because Brad Pitt's here. And then as soon as he leaves, every the, all the energy deflates, right? That is gravitas. That is a feeling of like, wow, this is an important person. And, you know, like this person has a lot of energy that they bring to the room that wasn't there when they're not there. So gravitas, it's hard to describe. It's hard to define, but it is a thing. And confidence is the biggest driver of gravitas. In addition to that, decisiveness. So we talk a lot about this in our program and also on this channel, but confidence and decisiveness are the two biggest drivers of gravitas, which is one of the three keys to having a high level of executive presence. So you have to be confident and you have to be decisive. If you cannot decide your way out of a one hold bag, you're not going to get very far as an executive. People aren't going to look for you for leadership because you literally can't make decisions. So it's important that you show up confident and you show up decisive. Even if you make the wrong decision and you're willing to admit that it's the wrong decision and go with a better decision later, that's what people are looking for, right? Like, yeah, sometimes the difference between one decision 
message in the other just isn't very much, pick one. It might not be the perfect way, like it's 48% versus 52%, but it's still gonna move you forward as opposed to sitting there without making a decision. So confidence, decisiveness. Now, this is what's really interesting to me. It used to be that integrity was the next key defining factor uh, or trait of gravitas. But in 2022, that's changed. It's now inclusiveness. And this makes sense in the context of what we've been through for the last 10 years with the pandemic, with the Me Too movement, with all of the hypercharged political environment that we've gone through for the last several years. So the idea of being more inclusive of people of different ethnicities, different mindsets, diverse opinions and experiences and presentations, you know, being just more inclusive, the LGBTQ community being more included in things, your ability as a leader to include diverse experiences and opinions and personalities is a high level driver of gravitas. If you are not naturally an inclusive person, if you only work with like-minded and like-looking people, then that's gonna drive your executive presence down. So embracing inclusiveness and diversity is an important factor in understanding gravitas, which drives executive presence. Another one that's new for this year is respect for others. And this is replacing things like blue chip pedigree, which I don't know what blue chip pedigree means. I guess it means like someday be a fortune 500 CEO, like, or you have background and experience blue chip pedigree. I guess it's, you know, like, yeah, I came from Google, so I'm awesome. Get rid of that. Instead, we're being respectful for others. There are some very polarized opinions in the world today. And being respectful of other people's perspectives and opinions is super important. One of the most important things that I teach in my program is how to communicate with people who think the opposite way that you do. You have to find common ground and build a relationship to people who have come to a very different conclusion about life than you did. That is an important trait in executive presence, being able to communicate with people that have very different perspectives than you. So respect for others, inclusiveness, you can see how these are here. Vision and integrity still are key components and that makes sense. Vision, you need to understand understand the big picture and integrity. Well, that's self-explanatory. If you can't be true to who you are, can't be authentic, then, you know, people aren't going to follow you. So these are the gravitas traits for 2022. Confidence, decisiveness, inclusiveness, respect for others, vision, integrity. I love them. I love this. I absolutely love this. Let's talk about communication now. Communication traits. In 2012, the number one communication trait was superior speaking skills, and that has not changed in 2022. Being able to articulate articulate what you're saying clearly and effectively is super important for communication. You have to be able to say what it is that you're trying to say. So learning how to get comfortable speaking is important. I encourage all of my clients to join Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a fantastic organization where you basically show up and you just start talking about something in front of a group of people. Because for a lot of people, speaking in front of a public audience is one of the scariest things that they can imagine. As an executive, you will speak in front of small and large groups all the time and you have to learn comfort in your communication. The way that I'm speaking to you right now is how you need to speak to your teams and this is a skill that you learn over time. So superior speaking skills is obviously the biggest driver of communication. Now, command of a room is the second, at least it was in 2012. Now it's command of a room or Zoom. And this is a big change from the last 10 years. How much of our interaction now is virtual? You and I are talking through a screen or I'm talking to you on video. And I've just had several video calls this afternoon with clients and people I'm working with, all virtual, not here in the house with me, right? I'm at home, I'm at my house, they're at their house. We're working collaboratively, but it's through Zoom. And when I work with my community, we have 37 people in the Executive Career Excel we had 25 people on a Zoom call last night, and it was up to me to present the content for that call, the teaching and the training that I was giving last night. I have to have that confidence of presence and communication skill on that Zoom call. So command of a room is also command of a Zoom. And so your ability to, to command the audience or take ownership of the presentation and kind of drive the agenda of a meeting in person or a meeting online. That's an important communication trait. I love this. You to be communication trait, you know, the next one down was forcefulness, which is so outdated. Luckily, we've replaced forcefulness with listen to learn 
orientation. This is fascinating to me because it's telling you that we want our leaders to hear us, to hear what we actually have to say, not just tell us forcefully what to do, but to listen so that you can learn and gain new perspective to better inform your decision boss, right? Like it's, it's amazing to me that this has bubbled up so high on this list, but I love it. I am here for it, right? Ability to read an audience. Yes, you need to read a room. If your audience is asleep or looking at their phone or they're just off or like they've just kind of given up on the conversation, then you're going to have a bad time. You need to make sure that you're understanding what the audience needs in that moment. If they need break, if they need you to pick up the pace, if they need more data or if they need something else, right? You need to be able to read the room. Authenticity makes an appearance here. And it's interesting to me that's under communication, but authenticity replaces, I guess, joking and bantering, Matt. Forcefulness and joking. Who were we in 2012? Jeez. Anyway, authenticity. And this makes sense because this is something I talk about a lot. I believe that the best executives are authentic and pathetic and audacious people. Authenticity is important because authenticity is what drives trust and trust drives profitability and success and higher levels of collaboration, lower levels of attrition, all of the good things that, you know, we seem to have forgotten are important parts of business, which is why like infuriates me that we just lay off thousands of people in tranches and, you know, just by turning their badge. Being an authentic leader means that people get to know you and all of you, like your flaws and all, right? Being authentically yourself means you're not trying to pretend to be something you're not. You're more relaxed. You're more comfortable. They become more relaxed and comfortable around you. You all start to trust each other more. And that higher level of trust leads to better outcomes in your team. So authenticity, I'm glad to see this one here. And then finally, use of body language, that's increased a lot, 23% now to 30%. So people are leaning into how body language actually helps communication. And if you think about it, we've replaced phone calls with Zoom or WebEx or whatever, like virtual calls. And so like you're seeing my actions and my activity in addition to hearing my voice and tonality. And those two together give you a presentation that's more information. 70% of communication is done non-verbally. So if I was talking the same way, but I'm acting like this, it's going to look very different to you than if I'm talking like this and saying the exact same words in the same tonality, right? So that non-verbal communication is super important. Being able to let people understand what you're thinking. This is hard for introverts sometimes, but the ability to present your emotions in a way that makes people clear on where you stand on something is a key component of communication, which is an element of executive presence. So let's talk about the third one, appearance. And appearance is an interesting category because it's not just like the clothes that you wear. That's a part of it, but it's not all of it. So let's talk about appearance. In 2012, the appearance traits that were most important were polished look, and that's not changed. And there's more information further down in this article that explains what polished look is. And it's also you know, spelled out very clearly in Sylvia Ann Hewlett's book, Executive Presence 2.0, which is available for download on Amazon. Generally speaking, polished look is showing up nice clothing that's well-fitting and is appropriate to the environment, right? So like, if you show up on Wall Street wearing clothes that look like they belong in Silicon Valley, that's not gonna fly. But if you show up in a Wall Street suit, a Brooks Brothers suit, out in Silicon Valley, that's also not going to fly. Different contexts, different environments require a different look. So you need to dress the part that you're going to play and help people have context about who you are and what your place is in the environment. So having a polished look is more than just looking good, it's also dressing appropriately. Here we are again with authenticity, and this is interesting that it's under appearance and communication. So authenticity is really becoming a key driver of executive presence, which luckily this is exactly what we focus on in this program. Authenticity, empathy, audacity. Those are the traits that make great leaders. It's my opinion, right? But here it is in black and white. Authenticity, which was not on this list in 2012, is now the second most important trait in regards to appearance. So people want you to show up and look authentic. So it's hard to describe what this 
looks and feels like, but imagine like a one of the mega pastors, those mega churches that look like just a little too polished. Like they got the perfect teeth and the perfect eyes and they look a little crazy. You can probably picture the guy I'm talking about, but he doesn't look authentic. It doesn't look real. He's not like it's a little too polished and a little too shiny and too candy coated and weird. So instead, show up exactly as you are. Now be polished, but be yourself. So you see me, I dress a certain way. This is how I dress all the time and that's how i'm always going to show up on camera and in person fitness and vigor also was not on this list in the past and i think this has to do with the trend of obesity especially in the united states just going through the roof all of us are just overweight and i think something like seven percent of americans now are at a healthy weight and you know i do get comments you know especially on like TikTok or instagram about my weight when i'm presenting and i'm overweight and i've shared in a previous video that you know i'm on a journey right now to lose 50 pounds and that's because i understand that fitness and vigor are an important part of this so it's not just your physical shape your physical fitness but also your stamina your ability to endure long events to if you had to stand on stage for three hours and communicate, you know, for a very long time, that's something that people are looking for in their leaders. The new normal style of dress, I think that's just basically getting real about that we don't live in a world where we need to wear hats and ties and suits all the time, that we're just a little more casual than we were in previous generations. Curation of online image. This one I love, and I fully expect this to skyrocket in the next one of these surveys. Curation of online image. What this means, it's your ability to present yourself in a way online that is authentic and three-dimensional. So what I mean by three-dimensional is you're showing different sides of yourself than just one. So one of the, an example of this is if you see someone posting one type of content all the time and it's all they do is they talk about this one topic in this one way, but you don't know anything about them personally. You don't know anything about their backstory or what's important to them or, you know, their family life because they, they hold that all opaque. You don't even know if they're married. You don't know if they have family. You don't know what their values are. You just know this one thing about them. That's one dimensional. Three dimensional versions of yourself are where you share all of this in a safe way and not oversharing, you know, because there's guardrails here. But generally speaking, you're you're creating this image of yourself that's easy for people to digest and say like, okay, I get this person. I may not agree with everything about them, but they're authentically them. And, you know, again, I think curation of online image, it's curation of an authentic online image. That's an important piece of this. So it's important to know that you can't just be an offline person anymore to be an executive. To move to the executive level, you have to have an online image as well. And we teach that in my program in the Executive Career Accelerator. We help you build this online image of yourself. And then finally, willingness to show up in person. And this one confused me, but generally speaking, what this means is you can't just be online. You can't just be like, a big thing with executives used to be they were in this like crystal palace building away from the rest of the manufacturing teams or they would be up on the top floor of the building and it would be locked off so that people who worked on the lower floors couldn't go up there. So there was this like separation between executives and the working force and that needs to go away. And this is saying, look, you need to mingle and communicate face to face in person with your team when that's appropriate. So you have to be willing to be online, but you also have to be willing to be in person as well. And I think more and more we're seeing that there's this blend of online and offline or online and in real life personas becoming more authentic to who we actually are and both portraying us the same way. And that's an important part of executive presence. So this article goes into this in detail. I'm not gonna read through all of this. I wanna walk you through these appearance traits, communications traits, and gravitas traits and how they've changed over the last 10 years years and I'm fascinated by this. I just, I love that we are evolving as a society towards, I think, better versions. We're holding our leaders more accountable to become better versions of themselves. I firmly believe that authentic, empathetic, and audacious leaders are far better than manipulative, strategic, tactical people who only have their own self-interests in mind and from time to time they align with the board or the shareholders views, that's going away. I think that the greed of the last four decades is 
going to create a backlash. And now we want leaders showing up who are here for the community, for the team. And I think you're going to see a big change in the way that businesses approve their leaders. And these traits are going to drive how people see you in terms of your executive presence. So I hope this was helpful to you. I highly encourage you to buy Sylvia and Hewlett's book, Executive Presence 2.0. It's available on Amazon. I am not a shill for her. I'm not giving you a link. You can go find it yourself. This article is on Harvard Business Review. It's free available to everybody. If you, I think after like four articles, then you have to pay. But if you've never downloaded an HBR article, you can go see it there. So I encourage you to go and learn more about Sylvia and Hewlett and learn about executive presence. I'll continue to talk about executive presence on this channel. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.